Welcome everyone. My name is Lars Mechtefessel. I'm this year's Vice Chair for the Vascular Discovery Meeting in Boston. And I'm joined here today with uh, Lisa Cassis from the University of Kentucky, uh, who is presenting at our meeting on sex differences in vascular diseases. Yes. So Lisa, what's, what can we expect from your talk today? What is your take on, vas uh, on sex differences in, in causality of vascular disease development? Yeah, such an important question. So I, get, I, I would uh, acknowledge the leadership of the American Heart Association and Go Red for Women and, and making the point that we need to consider biologic sex and how we prevent and diagnose and treat cardiovascular diseases like vascular diseases. And my laboratory studies uh, the very basic determinants of biologic sex, mostly sex hormones and more recently sex chromosomes, uh, which is quite a fascinating, fascinating area of study, on how that contributes to both the formation and the severity and progression of abdominal aortic aneurysms. Okay, very nice. So maybe we can speak first a little bit about the experimental models um, you are using. So how do you, how do you determine the sex differences in That's the experimental models that, that you are applying to answer that question? It's a great and very challenging uh, question because whenever we manipulate sex hormones or sex chromosomes in mice, uh, typically we also can influence the fertility of, of mm -hmm. different experimental models. So we use a model uh, in the literature. It's called the four core genotypes. It's a model that amazingly allows us to create females, um, and these are mice, that have an XX, which is the normal female sex chromosome genotype, or an XY sex chromosome genotype. And both of these females, for example, have ovaries. So we've basically been able to dissect away the sex chromosomes from sex hormones and and look at these models and how we can induce the formation and then study the severity of abdominal aortic aneurysms. Um, as, an, as an inducer for an aneurysm, what, what type of substances can you, can you use and what are you using in your lab and what maybe other people could use um, if they want mm -hmm. to uh, establish a different model? It's a great question too because there are several animal models of aneurysms. Um, we use a model that was created at the University of Kentucky in collaboration with Alan Dougherty, who is the editor for the Arteriosclerosis, Thrombosis, and Vascular Biology Journal of the American Heart Association. Alan and I discovered that if you infuse the peptide angiotensin II into certain types of mice, that it causes the formation of aneurysms that form in the suprarenal part of the aorta. Uh, but this is not the only experimental model that exhibits sex differences in aneurysm formation. Actually, there are several others, and to my knowledge, uh, to a T, almost every one of them shows a similar male bias for the disease compared to female mice, uh, which very much parallels what happens in humans. And in humans, um, abdominal aortic aneurysms are typically considered a male preponderance disease. Okay, and maybe moving from the experimental side a bit more to the clinical situation, maybe you can tell us a little bit about why I'm mm -hmm. more prone to develop an aneurysm um, than, than females are. I mean, you briefly mentioned uh, that hormones might play a role yes, in this yes. uh, aspect, so maybe you can educate us a little sure. bit on us. And in our experimental model, what we found is that testosterone, which is the primary male sex hormone, is indeed a very positive regulator of this pathology. So in other words, um, we can even make a female mouse susceptible to getting an aneurysm by exposing her to testosterone levels that would be experienced by a male. Mm -hmm. um, so our, our data would suggest that certainly um, certain types of male sex hormones, especially testosterone, uh, could be contributors to this pathology which um, and this may occur over decades in humans. Um, we, we've also, of course, looked at the role of sex chromosomes, and now we have uh, found that the presence of the Y chromosome in males, uh, coupled with the presence of testosterone, are very powerful co-stimulants for the disease pathology. Um, so we've also found that it's not as simple as that. So if a female or XX uh, sex chromosome genotype, what we found there is it, it very much influences where the disease forms in the aorta. 
Mm. And that's relevant to humans because even though women are protected from abdominal aortic aneurysms, mm. if they have one, it's much more dangerous in women uh, where they grow more rapidly and can rupture at smaller sizes. Mm. Um, so in this context of, of sex hormones in the, in the clinical or human disease, so should, should women be aware of when they um, come into menopause that they're now more susceptible to actually develop an aneurysm? And is that something well, These you know, I don't think we know the answer to that question mm. because uh, of the you know patient population that may be available at any one hospital setting. Mm. Uh, we're kind of behind in what we know in humans uh, mm -hmm. on the sex differences, but it, it does seem to appear that you know this is a disease uh, with advancing age and women that get them, even though women aren't routinely screened at all uh, for aneurysms would be most logically postmenopausal females mm. and, and, and this could play a role. And indeed in, in our experimental models uh, we have found that estrogen could play some sort of protective role um, mm. against the aneurysm progression uh, mm. once it's formed. And so I think, you know, but therein again we have to be careful because some of the studies with hormone, sex mm. hormone administration um, didn't show f favorable results on the vasculature. Mm. Um, I know that uh, in Europe, and I think in the U.S., it's the same that um, when, and we have a quite a young audience, of course, that, that are now g getting into writing grants and writing applications, that it's become a, a, a big thing to, to consider sex differences when writing applications, I assume, to the AHA, but also to the NIH mm -hmm. and some of the European funding agencies as well. So what would you, would you advise when planning a study that you would want to get funded uh, to people that apply or want to apply for grants? Yeah, this is such an important question because it is something that we're actually um, reviewed on uh, mm. when we submit grants to agencies like the American Heart Association and the National Institutes of Health. A as a matter of fact, I, I wrote an editorial in collaboration with several other co-authors for the Arteriosclerosis, Thrombosis, and Vascular Biology Journal on this very issue uh, along the lines of, you know, should we consider both sexes in aneurysm studies. The practicality of doing mm. that, uh, certainly in the abdominal aortic aneurysm area, is that not very many female mice are susceptible to getting aneurysms. So for the types of studies that we would more routinely do experimentally, it, it's very difficult to do those studies in females. So mm -hmm. in some cases I'd say depending on the disease it's probably logical to do the studies in the sex that is predominantly the one that experiences the condition. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, I think that that ignores a lot of what's going on. So I'm hesitant mm -hmm. to say it's not important to study both sexes but sometimes for practical and other reasons it's, it's what we, we do. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa, thank for you. again accepting the honors to present and thanks for sharing your thoughts on this very important topic and we hope that everyone uh, enjoys the rest of the meeting. Thank you.